Welcome to We Drink and We Farm Things, the mini-sode. In this mini-sode, we're going to talk about holiday decorations and which plants they may contain that may be toxic to your chickens. Ooh, dun dun dun. I'm also just going to call out the fact that this is an episode where we're going to say scientific plant names and it's probably going to be wrong. So we'll just say that ahead of the game to set people's expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a podcast where we drink and we talk about farming things. So yes. I don't think anyone expects us to pronounce everything 100% correctly. Yes, I hope not. And if you do, please lower your expectations. <laughs> and speaking of our beverages, what are you drinking over there, Sam? So today I have a Sam Adams spruce lager. And it's crisp and refreshing, and it has notes of pine, which I thought was perfect because Mm. this lager is brewed with spruce tips. So we're going to talk about, you know, fancy holiday plants today. So I felt like I should just basically feel like I'm drinking a Christmas tree. I like that. I couldn't I was trying to find a beer that was like (laughs) that because I had the same exact thought. But the best I could do was a Cranberry Berliner Weiss by Sonder Brewing, and it's Mm. called Boggs. And Sonder is a local Ohio brewery. And cranberries are used in holiday decorations, so it sort of works. But cranberries are non-toxic, so you're good there. (laughs) You're safe. Yes. And today's drink sponsor is EGF Brahma Mama. Over on Instagram, a.k.a. Elise Ferguson. So cheers, lady, and thank you for sponsoring our drinks. Cheers. So we saw this shared on Facebook, or at least I did, from the Coop Dreams page on Facebook. And it was a share from the Poultry DVM page. And it had a really nice, timely graphic and information about toxic holiday plants. Uh, So if you can't track that down on Facebook, you can actually just go to chickendvm.com slash toxic.php. We'll link to that in the show notes. And that is a really handy page where you can like look up plant names and figure out like what is poisonous and what is not for your chickens. Yeah. And what we're going to talk about specifically from this page are holiday decorations that might be poisonous to your chickens. Because this time of year, like, I don't know about you, Sam, but I like to decorate with live things when I can like I don't necessarily have a lot of time to put stuff together but you know like I have some pots with some live things in it that I like chopped from the bottom of our Christmas tree and collected from the yard or you might do a workshop where you create like a Christmas swag or a wreath using live things and when the holiday's over you're like what do I do with these things well they're live I can throw them to my chickens right wrong maybe (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so you're way fancier than me. I have not attempted to do anything with live things in the winter anyways. So I have the luxury of not really worrying about it. But some of you guys are just as fancy as Bev. Like you had that like video on your Instagram the other day of you putting some really cute thing together on your porch. And I was just like, oh, goals. But I'm just too lazy and don't have time really right now. (laughs) Like with that combination, it's just not happening. Did you see how long that video was? It was like a minute and 30 seconds. (laughs) Yeah, you're so fast. (laughs) Super fast. (laughs) So you want to keep an eye on, you know, if you're if you're as fancy as Bev um, or as creative, I should say, you know, one of those categories, uh, whether you're buying it or making it yourself, you want to watch what's in your wreaths and garland um, because there's oftentimes things that might not be so great for your chickens. And some of those um, decorations are often made from types of evergreens. And while most species of evergreens are non-toxic, there are some that are poisonous, both the leaves and the berries. And the toxicity level often remains the same in fresh or dry form. Which is important to note because sometimes you think that once it's dry, it's dead. So it can't be harmful anymore. But that is not true. Right. Just like poisonous snake, if you cut its head off and it bites you, you're still screwed. Oh, geez. I didn't know that. Yeah. The more you know. (laughs) Um, And if your animals are kept in confinement and they're around these plants, um, they are more at risk at consuming the plant parts. Even the non-toxic plants can cause an impacted crop. So this holiday, just be mindful about hanging them where your birds can get them. Um, And even if you hang them up high, 
Parts might get dislodged and fall to the ground, especially if it's windy. So here are some of the most popular holiday plants that you'll want to keep an eye out for if you have chickens. And the first one on the list is all parts of you, which is taxis. Hmm. SSP? SPP? SPP? I was like, SPP. how do I say that? <laughs> It is very poisonous, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> yes, 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 because it contains a complex mixture of alkaloids, in case you're wondering why it's poisonous and you have that sciency brain. Yes. So toxins A and B are two of the major components, and they are absorbed very fast, and they interfere with calcium channels and cardiac myocytes, which results in cardiac arrest and death within 30 minutes of ingestion. With as little as 0.1% body weight in its leaves. So like you is like a no-no. No you at all. And you is so pretty. So it's kind of a shame. Yeah. Something else you have to keep an eye out for is sacred bamboo, which is Nandina domestica, and California holly, which is heteromelis arbutifolia. I'm starting to feel like I'm in Harry Potter and I'm saying spells. Pretty much. I mean, we did just talk about you. So you yeah. is a wood that is most used for wands because I think you is actually oh. thought of as like a magical wood or like a magical tree. I can't remember why exactly, but I feel like I'm remembering that. Mm. Well, I had no idea. So that was a, a great coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, sacred bamboo and California holly contain cynogenic glyso glycosides and other alkaloids that produce highly toxic hydrogen cyanide which is extremely poisonous to all animals sudden death may be the only sign of cyanide poisoning and death usually usually comes in minutes to an hour and since california holly is found throughout the hills of southern california it is frequently used in making wreaths and garlands in los angeles And we know there's a bunch of those bougie chickens in Los Angeles. So you guys watch out. Yes. So mountain laurel is another one that you want to keep an eye out for. It is Calmia latifolia. And it is a medium to large, densely branched evergreen shrub or small tree. And it is found commonly throughout the Appalachian area coastal plains alongside streams and on cool forested slopes throughout the eastern United States. And fun fact, I think we had one of these in our yard Mm. and Jared pulled it and threw it in the back of the utility vehicle for me. And he's like, hey, I was going to throw this over to the goats and Herc, but I wanted to check with you first because we feed them evergreens all the time because we've got, you know, like tons of forested areas. And I looked at it and was like, I don't know. There's something about it that just doesn't make me want to feed it to them for some reason and I tried to identify it and I couldn't totally like positively identify it but just the idea that it might be this I was like nope (laughs) and we threw it into like a compost area (laughs) there you go so it has thick shiny leathery dark green leaves on top and they're pale green color underneath And it has like a showy bowl-shaped round cluster of different shades of pink and white flowers. And um, their fruits are dry and they eventually split open to release extremely tiny seeds. And uh, they form dense patches that are often referred to as laurel hells or ivy thickets. And uh, the toxic components are... K latifolia leaves and berries, um, and they are toxic to poultry if they're ingested because they contain grayenotoxins, which are also known as andromedon toxins, mm. and sodium channel activators. So symptoms develop between 30 minutes to up to six hours following consumption. Damn. Yeah. Next on the list is boxwood, which is Buxus sempervirens. We'll go with that. And -hmm. it's a decorative evergreen shrub or a small tree. And the plant is frequently used for landscaping, gardens, and holiday decorations, such as wreaths and garlands. All parts of the boxwood plant are poisonous to humans and animals, including poultry. They contain steroidal, steroidal 
alkaloids. Um, if the leaves are e- eaten, they can cause convulsions and respiratory failure. If eaten by poultry, contact your local veterinarian as your bird may require sedatives and respiratory or heart stimulants to recover from boxwood poisoning. Eek. Ugh. And holly, which is Lex opaca? I know I said that wrong. There's no I way feel like right. we should have started this mini soda out by saying it was a drinking game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes. And it's American holly is a small evergreen tree or large shrub with alternate stiff leathery green leaves and fruiting branches. And its fruit are berry-like dull and rounded berries on a quarter-inch stalk, which mature in October and continue into the winter. And L. opaca produces tiny white flowers, which bloom early spring to early summer. And it's frequently used as an ornamental and also used as Christmas decorations. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've all had some holly. Oh, right? yeah. And I, I actually I have a holly bush in my yard. The chickens leave it alone, but it's in the front yard. Uh, the toxic components of the holly are the berries. The berries are toxic to chickens if ingested. They contain several toxins, which include saponids, terpenoids, steroids, alkaloids and cyanogenic glucosides. I should get a star for saying that. You (laughs) should. That was good. The concentration and types of toxins vary depending on the growth stage of the berries. And the highest concentration of the saponins decrease as the fruit ripen. So while the concentrations of tannins increase. Yeah, just don't feed them, Holly. Yeah, don't do it. And even though it might be super cute because you want to give your chickens a little peck on the cheek... Uh, mistletoe is actually also poisonous. Um, European mistletoe, uh, Viscum album, as well as American mistletoe, which of course is like 20 times more difficult to say, Frodendron serotonum, Mm -hmm. are both (laughs) evergreen parasitic perennials with white and translucent berries that grow on the trunks and branches of Decidus trees. Deciduous. I, can, I know how to say that one, so I'll, I'll fix that one for you. <laughs> oh, that was better. Mine was more fun, though. Yours was way more fun, Mine I, sounded I like admit. dick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they are common holiday symbols sold frequently during the winter holiday season. Uh, the toxic components of that, of both mistletoe species, are, um, they contain ferrotoxins, which are toxal albumins that cause digestive upset. Ingestions of all parts other than the berries can result in toxicity of the liver, central nervous system, and kidney. Um, So yikes. Uh, And then there are a couple more plants that were pointed out in the graphic that I I couldn't find on their website. Um... But if you uh, also have bittersweet English ivy or poinsettias, you also want to be careful with those around your chickens. (sighs) So, but you know what? I will say, based on my own experience, that my chickens tend to stay away from things that can kill them. Plant-wise, I should point out. Um, For example, tomatoes, they're only interested in the actual fruit themselves while the leaves are what are poisonous to tomatoes or to chickens within tomatoes. So they're not stupid, but it's better not to tempt them with things or give them easy access to this stuff when they're bored and have nothing better to do. Yeah, because I definitely think it kind of depends on how you keep your chickens. Like I think uh, chickens that are cooped are more likely to go after something that uh-huh. is toxic if you put it in their run for them because you know they don't get access to new things all the time there's nothing wrong with keeping chickens in a run or a coop that's definitely not what i'm saying but like my chickens are freaking picky like i gave them a pumpkin but because they free range they decided they liked all the other things better and just let my nice pumpkin sit there and rot so 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> and there was nothing wrong with the pumpkin. Uh, but I did want to give you guys a tip really quick on how to like share your Christmas tree after the season with them um, because most evergreens are safe. So if you have a Christmas tree that's on the list of safe evergreens for your chickens, I like to weave the branches in and out of the chicken wire on the outside of their run. And they'll all jump to peck and get all of the green <laughs> spikes off of the um, off of the branches, and it gives them a little exercise, and also creates kind of a wind block on the inside of their of their run. So that's something I like to do every every Christmas. That's awesome because it's going to give them exercise too, which they totally months. need in January. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that everyone's goal in January to like be healthy, lose weight? So there you go. You're just helping them meet their goals. Exactly. And another thing to think of too, you know, I've seen a lot of people like really stepping up their game and decorating their coops for the holiday season. Um, I've done that before, too. This year, I got a little behind schedule. And at this point, I kind of feel like, well, what's the point? Um, But I use fake wreaths and lights on their coop just so they can't get into anything by accident that is closer to where they hang out. Um, So unless it's something you know is for sure edible, um, you might want to, or I should say, not edible, not poisonous is probably a better thing to say. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You want to be careful about what you put on their coop, too, if you're trying to have that Instagram moment. Um, Also, if it's not poisonous and you're putting it in their their range of jumping, um, that could kind of ruin your Instagram moment, too. So (laughs) they just don't care. (laughs) <laughs> well you know the thing about like the outside in your coop and stuff is like you only have control over so much so right. this list is really nice because we see a lot of those chicken wreaths made out of evergreens and stuff and they're super cool and in fact I've asked somebody local to make one for me I don't know if he's finished it yet but I'm totally going to hang it on their door for them mm. And I made sure that he's making it out of all things that they can eat and ingest because it's really tempting to like add a holly berry or, you know, something else for like a pop of color and whatnot. But like mm-hmm. this list lets you know that some of, some of those things are definitely not safe. But when you hang something on their coop door, like mine free range, so they have access to the front of their coop door. I don't have control over the wind. So the wind can totally knock that thing off and they'll eat it in like 30 seconds. So, Great. yeah. So that's why it's really important to make sure that they're just made out of stuff if it's for them just make it for them 100 percent. yes so that's it guys we kept it short and sweet for you today yeah but short and sweet and i mean super useful if you ask me yeah and if you were listening to this while you're wrapping gifts or doing chores um we just want to say merry christmas happy holidays happy whatever you celebrate you'll hear from us again soon but we hope you're hanging in there Um, because the struggle can be real this time of year while you're trying to juggle everything. But we are here for you. Absolutely. And if you need a laugh, you can listen to one of our old episodes. (laughs) (laughs) You might laugh at how bad the audio is, but you'll laugh. (laughs) I mean... So just a couple of housekeeping things for us. Uh, Be sure and... Leave us a review over on the Apple Podcasts. If you don't have an Apple product, you can download iTunes to your laptop and leave a review that way because we read the reviews you guys leave us and we draw a name out of the hat at the end of the month for all of the reviews that we read and that person wins an exclusive mug, which will not ever be in the shop. And you want this mug. It's super cute. Yes. And hit the subscribe button and download episodes when you listen because this helps more people like you find us and be sure and share this episode over on instagram uh take a screenshot of it while you're listening to it share it in your stories tag at drink and farm and we'll send you a coupon code that's good for everything in our shop over at drinkandfarm.com so you can save a little money on cool drink and farm gear and finally make sure you look at the show notes to find links to the poultry dvm uh website you know a survey to tell us how we're doing and all of our social media goodness and merchandise shops so that's it guys yeah thanks for listening yes we hope you learned something we had fun telling you all about it yes we learned something too so drink farm 
and give zero clucks. Bye, guys. Bye. We drink things, we farm things, we drink and farm things.